Good afternoon. So as befits the person who comes from an academic institution, I'm going to inflict some slides on you. <laughs> <laughs> what you just said, but I will, I will try and do it rather, rather, rather quickly. Women's fear. We're here because we want to make a difference. And I'm meant to talk today about how we make a difference in the world of public policy and in the world of academia. And I want to talk specifically to those of you who have absolutely no intention of spending any of your working life in academia or in, or in public policy. So if I turn first uh, to academia, and I want to illustrate this a little bit with respect to my own life. The great thing about academia, even if you're not in it, is that it puts you in touch with the big ideas crowd. And it's terribly important in your organization not to be the brightest person in the organization, but to be the person who's in touch with the big ideas crowd. And I'm going to try and illustrate what that, that means. So yes, you've got to get your education. And it matters for women because it gives them a network and it gives them confidence that they have the right to succeed. But once you've got that education, stay in touch with the world of academia. Do something like in your company, sign up for the pro bono assignments. Get in touch in sponsoring speaker series. Write with an academic. Organize joint events. You're about to hear in a moment from Michael. Michael is on the Mobiles for Good Foundation of Vodafone. We do things with them at, at London Business School. Get yourself a visiting professorship. It gives you a platform beyond your organization. And eventually, it gives you a whole set of links that makes you the big ideas person in your organization. Next one, if you're in public policy, or if you're not in public policy, if the idea of being involved in politics or all that sclerotic bureaucracy that can go with public service or the horrors of politicking, then you don't have to spend all your time there. But think about this. If you jump across worlds and work with government or with public policy, it will be incredibly important to your future career. Because as you advance in life, your ability to jump across worlds is going to become ever more important. And I want just to say a word about my own experience there. Because as I look back to the range of cabinet positions I had, what I am proud of as I look back on is not the occasions when I laid down the law in a legislature to make things change by force of a parliamentary vote. It was actually the occasions on which you partnered with somebody outside of government to really make something happen. And there's just a couple of them here. The first one is an entrepreneur who says, I want to make sure that every single child in a Scottish primary school understands what it's like to be an entrepreneur. We're going to do business education in every primary school, make it, make it happen. Or the people in financial services who said, is it not shameful that we have the worst public housing in the entirety of Europe? When are we going to fix this by giving the houses back to the tenants and how can we work with you to make that happen? And it was people in, in financial services who did that. Or the people who said, Scotland's got a great brand. When are we going to create a network of people around the world who've all got something in common with, with Scotland to grow trade? Or in the last case, seeing that we were really, really behind on the early years. What do you do in the early years? We went to Chicago and we found the most right-wing, I, sh I should say to give it context, I was a, a Labour politician, we found the most right-wing Chicago Nobel Prize winning economist that we could and we said come to Scotland and talk to us about the early years. And he came and just transformed everybody's mindset by saying if you invest in a child age six months, you can still transform their life. Even if you win the lottery when your children are 16, their life chances are, are still set. So all of those occasions, and the last one, Olivia should be here, this was about how do you get broadband to every single remote part of Shetland, Orkney, the, the, the Western Isles? It means you have to deal make with somebody like BT. And so this is really saying, be the person in your organization 
that takes your organization out, that jumps across worlds and finds a partner who also wants to have a win-win uh, with you. And that's really a way of saying be the person who joins the human dots. Whether you're in public policy, whether you're in academia, whether you're in government, whether you're, you're in an NGO, be the person who joins the, the human dots. So where are we? Um, a business school always does data. You don't have to master all of this. It looks a tad depressing. It's the same story everywhere. How many CEOs in the Fortune 100? There are eight. Three in the UK, it will be four when we do Prudential later this year. Of the top 100 deans, four of them are women. Top 100 vice chancellors around the world, 11 of them are women. And so it, and so it goes on. But wider women's leadership is looking a little bit better. And critically, we should start looking in some unexpected places around the globe. We might only be managing 17 or 18 percent. But actually, for the people who sit, let me take the second one, the GMAT takers, that's the kind of standardized test to get into business school, 65 percent of the people in China taking GMAT are women. And the legislator that's beating all of us out the world in MPs is Rwanda. So look around the world and, and, and be encouraged. And this is drawn something that Amanda said. History is on our side. We are moving in the right direction. I will come back to why I think it's accelerating and, and what the challenge of our time is. But this is to pick up on, on a point that Monica made. You know, we know what works here. We know what we need to do. Yes, mentoring matters, but sponsorship is immensely more important. Yes, we need talent development programs. Yes, we need targets. We need measurement because we measure what matters and what gets measured gets changed. And I'm going to give a nomination to uh, Annalisa, which is to say there's a editor of the uh, Financial Times business section, a woman called Della Bradshaw. And one of the things Della has done is make sure that six of the 40 metrics that measure the success of business school worldwide are all about diversity. How many women have you got on your board? How many women students have you got? How many women professors have you got? How many geographies are, are recognized? She has transformed the way in which business schools think about diversity by just saying, we're going to measure you in this, guys, and we're going to measure you every every year. Tackling unconscious bias, valuing diversity. We know what works. We know what we need to do. And let me come to three minutes. Three takeaways in, in, in three minutes. Um, your time, our time, it has come. This are some of the support networks that just in the last decade have been set up to deal with that leaky pipeline that has women leaving organizations that we have to turn around. So the 40 Foundation is one that encourages women to go to business school and, and, and get educated. The Professional Boards Forum, known to many, it's the forum for bringing together chairman and talented women. Women on Boards, fantastic Australian organization that's just established itself in Britain, gives women exactly the sort of training they need to get them advanced into leadership positions. The Clore Social Leadership Program, a really serious leadership program for women in the nonprofit sector. I could have added on, uh, I could have added on Women's Sphere coming to the UK in uh, 2010. And I just cite here, we've already heard about um, how Warren Buffett moves mountains in, uh, in, in Goldman's. Many of you will have seen, if not Google it tonight, he wrote a fantastic article that has just gone viral around the world in the last month saying, I am an unqualified optimist. Women are the major reason we will, will, will do so well. And I only just want to say one more thing about this. The photos of the people who are there are all women at London Business School who created those sorts of mentoring networks in London in the last 10 years. And we should thank them all. And it was only when I was writing this presentation, I suddenly realized this is Diane, who was my predecessor. This is Ellen, who did an executive MBA with us. This is uh, Rowena, who did a Sloan program. Uh, and this is Mary, who's on our uh, International Alumni Council. These are just women who did say, I want to be part of the big ideas crowd and I want to make it different for the people who follow me. And we are going to stand on, on their shoulders and, and, and the time is right to, to, to do so. And you will hear more. You have on your, your um, desk today an example of what Side Business School is doing to really grow 
women's leadership, because part of that confidence issue is being with other women and really convincing yourself that yes, you can, you can do it. Okay, second takeaway. I thought I should let the guys get a slight look in here, so here's a, here's a guy. This is about be purposeful. Wherever you are, be purposeful, both about your own career, but also about your big goal that Monica was talking about. Now, some of you may or may not know who the guy is. I should say the background is a, is a, is a giveaway, but uh, <laughs> it is actually the CEO, it's uh, Paul Pullman, who's the CEO of uh, Unilever. And there will be some of you who think, especially in the US, who think Unilever is that kind of, you know, little guy also ran to, to, to P&G, and maybe in market share it is. But this is a really interesting story about how wherever you are, you can be purposeful. One of the millennia development goals was to cut child mor mortality by two thirds by 2015. And there were seven million ch child deaths in 2010. It's now down to six million. But the interesting insight that Paul had was he asked himself, what will I say to my children and my grandchildren? And he decided to do two things. One, that he would decouple growth from sustainability. So he would deal with the sustainability issue in his, his organization uh, without stopping growth. But secondly, he was going to do his bit to deliver in this goal, make it real, not leave it to politicians, but make it real. And he got his organization together and said, actually, if we wash hands properly, we will save two million children's lives. I mean, it's extraordinary. It is to say you can cut diarrhea by 45% by just using salt, life oil in, in, in the US. And he's run a fantastic campaign on this. We will cut child deaths by, by two million. It's the big, hairy, audacious goal that we've heard, and it's about being purposeful. And that is something that we, 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 we need to do more of. And finally, the third takeaway is to invest in yourself, because women are very, very good in investing in the organization. We call it in business school the paradox of indispensability. You are so indispensable to your boss that they are not ever going to promote you out of your current position. You need to invest. It's absolutely true. It is an academically proven phenomenon. You need to invest uh, in yourself. And part of that, as we've, uh, we've heard, is asking yourself the tough questions, really know yourself on that career journey, explore the opportunities, build your skills, act and achieve. But on your leadership journey, as opposed to simply your career journey, that is a story of moving from what I or me can do to what we can do together. Because it is all about your ability to lead a high performing team. And in that sense, women are fantastic at leading teams. And we need to think about how to do that better. Part of it's about self-assessment, know thyself. Part of it's about building connections and the networks we've heard about. And part of it's about being purposeful. OK, so the very last thing is just what will we do together? We'll talk about this in, in the coffee break. But make sure you are part of the big ideas crowd, that you are purposeful, that you get connected to people, you are the person in your organization that jumps across worlds, and that you invest in your own journey. Thank you very much. Thank you.